now. Good morning. This is uh, MT Clark, and uh, this is the MT for Christ 24-7 podcast. And uh, today uh, we're we're doing the program, uh, a Bible study with the Sincatis. And as you can see, um, it's funny to say that, um, we are joined by Susanna Sincati and myself, M.D. Clark, and my wife, Tammy Lynn Clark, um, for our Bible study this morning. Right. When Ms. Arthur Sincati had some of his wisdom removed by having mm. a large wisdom tooth extracted from his jaw mm. this week. And so he's not feeling quite up to par. Okay. And yet he still authored our Bible study. And yet, um, yes, last night he, he was diligent as he always is. And he put it together. What makes us all laugh, the three of us laugh, is because we prophesied that Arthur would do the next step because, of course, he's still on 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Now abides faith, hope, and love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Right. So here we are talking about love, and I think it's appropriate that, you know, love takes different um, colors, so to speak. Sometimes love is really hot and red and exciting, and sometimes it's kind of yellow and mellow and pleasant. Sometimes it's blue and cool because you know someone is sad or something's going on so today you know we have to we love arthur through this we we miss him we hope that he gets better we're praying for him to get better and like i said he may come down and join us later but if not we just love him through this that's it love is something wonderful because as, as mark has often said about tammy lynn that they fell in love and they got married and it was a beautiful thing. And now they're living through the, they had the hot, red, hot stuff. Now they're kind of living through the, the ups and downs of marriage and what love is all about. Love is not always that ooey gooey, fuzzy feeling. Would you guys agree with that? Yeah, in fact, Tammy Lynn's been reading a book on, on the seasons of marriage um, and, and how that goes. Uh, where have you gotten in that book and what season uh, did you did you read? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think they started with spring, and I'm in fall now. I think. And when oh, what was the, what was the uh, the difference between spring and do they do winter, spring, summer, and they fall? They have all four seasons. I haven't made it through all of them yet. What was the first one they started with? I, spring. Spring, okay. And so we do say we're we're in the spring of our marriage, or yeah, I mean we're relatively we're still newlyweds, really. Um, you know, we've only been married since the first of the year. But uh yeah, so yeah, so it, I can see how that, that would be a, a good book for you guys to go through, but it'd be a good book for any marriage to go through because uh as you point out, there's four seasons, Tammy, and and uh <clears throat> Spring is, is usually the first season of marriage and love and <laughs> blossoming and all that kind of stuff and walking through the fields with the flowers and all that kind of thing. But sometimes it gets a little icky sticky and, and uh, like summer may come along and it gets a little hot. Uh, one of Arthur and my favorite um, Broadway productions <clears throat> is The Fantastics. And it was, it's a, it was the longest running play musical play uh, in New York <clears throat> I don't even remember how many years but for years and years I mean years and years it was it was playing and there's a there's a middle section to there's two parts to the play and in the middle section what you would think is the, the you know the the time when people can leave and go get something to drink go to the restaurant but the actors are remain on stage and they're kind of intertwined because they've, they've fallen in love and now they've gotten back together and now they're together. And the biggest thing is the song is called This Plum's Too Ripe. And it's, it's now some argument. It's now some rubbing against each other. It's now some, oh, it's hot and sticky and maybe it, this plum's too ripe. So mm. sometimes you go through those things. But then as the, as the play progresses, in the second act and the second part of the musical, they go through a time of, of, of going back and forth, but they all come back together. And the parents are happy for the, the couple and the couple is happy again together. And they see that 
sometimes love requires growth. Mm -hmm. Just like our faith required growth, just like our, our, our holding on to hope requires growth, certainly love does also. <clears throat> Arthur pointed out that um, God is a Trinitarian. Mm -hmm. Big words. But we love Arthur and his vocabulary. Mm. But Trinitarian simply means uh, three, three and one. Mm -hmm. And it, it exalts his own character by giving the equations of three. There's often throughout the Bible talks of three, three times something is said, three times there are parts of a, of a parable, three you know pieces to a puzzle. So, <clears throat> and three being an interesting number, if you, he points out here because of course Arthur, as you people know, are, is a carpenter. He's a mm. fine woodworker, maker. He builds beautiful things and chairs and, and things are one of the things that he does create, whether he's putting something back together, um, for example, we got this beautiful Chippendale chair that we had to have extra insurance on the, the shop because we had this museum piece of, of a Chippendale chair. Oh, wow. It was brought to him basically in a box in pieces. Mm. And it's like, oh, mm. well, what do I do with this? And put it back together. <clears throat> and of course, a chair has four legs. Um, it couldn't possibly stand on two legs. But a stool could stand on three legs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, you have to have that at least three piece to make something stand up. And I think that that's um, also a very, a very good point about God. You think yeah. About <laughs> and the Trinitarian nature of our God is pointed out, you know, obviously with the, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was in our, uh, our, our recent doctrines class that the, the Trinity was being sp spoken about, or uh, my noethetic counseling class. Uh, actually, I think it was the latter, um, uh, where, where the Trinity was pointed out in our relationships, um, uh, our love relationship between man and wife, and how the third leg in, a, uh, in that relationship has to be uh, the Lord, as, yeah. uh, as, as the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are, are, are three, uh, man, his, his wife, and God at the center of their marriage, um, you know, will, will create a firm foundation, a firm footing for, for that love to grow and not be unbalanced. No. Exactly, exactly. Uh, we went to um, one of those um, family re uh, life retreats for marriage, <clears throat> and they talked about the triangle. Mm. Now, the base of the triangle, there were two lines going up, and if they go parallel <clears throat> and never meet, then, you know, your marriage is not, it's just, you're just two people that happen to be living in the same house together kind of thing. Mm. <clears throat> but if they go to an apex at the point then the marriage, you get closer and closer together. But what is the apex at the point that you're striving for as, as a, a married couple to take your love to? But as Arthur has often said, <clears throat> love is an object. There's an object for your love. And that love, of course, is God. Mm -hmm. God is your apex at the top of your triangle. Then you're going to move together as you move closer to God. You're going to move closer and closer together with each other. Yeah. And I thought that, that was a great illustration of love. Mm -hmm. I love, love that. <clears throat> you know, I looked at my concordance and my the concordance in my Bible is pretty, pretty extensive, but I was looking at the love and I can't even count how many times love is used in the Bible. Oh yeah. The word love. And then there's loved and lovely and lover, and love, loves, love sick. So um, loving kindness, I mean, there's just so many derivatives of this word love. Mm. And uh, one of my, when, when we were in some Bible studies and, and marriage counseling and things like that, uh, a pastor once said, you should not do Song of Solomon until you're at least 35. No one should do it because it's too racy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, well, that's probably true. Mm. But it starts off with the Shulamite in, in the um, first chapter of the Song of Solomon. <clears throat> it says, the Song of Songs, which is of Solomon, the banquet. And the Shulamite says, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for love is better than wine. Mm. There's, there's, there's 
just that's just a, a, a tasting of what's going on for your your love sis your love between each other and your love together um i know that it could just go on and says love is as strong as death love is um i do just ju do justly love mercy that's out of malachi mm. uh, love those who love you you know those those are things there's different versions of what we've got to say is uh, Romans 3 13 10 says love does no harm mm. John 20, 21 16 says I know that I love you and we will be known by our love for one another mm. the gospel will say <clears throat> so there's just so much that's that's in there and and also of course the the one in it, Ephesians where it says husbands love your wives wives respect your husband I always thought that was kind of weird that that the husbands would be, would be exhorted to love us, mm -hmm. but yet, Tammy Lynn, you and I are just supposed to respect them. Um, you know, that just seems to me to be kind of an, an odd thing, other than the fact that maybe as women, we have a capacity and, and we're just there with love because we love our children, we love our families, and we, we would love our husbands. <clears throat> Men have a less capacity, you know, in, innate capacity. I think it has that has to grow. Would you agree with that? <clears throat> Tammy Lynn, would you agree with that? Yeah, I, I guess. I, yeah, it's just that natural motherly love that we have that probably just comes out. Mm. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> you think that, that, that you have more of a propensity to love people? Yeah, well, the traditional roles, I mean, uh, you know, you think in society is the, you know, um, since the fall of man is then the, the man is to be the hunter gatherer or whatever for his family and protector, you know, from predators, I guess, um, you know, you think of, uh, you know, maybe not, maybe not as loving um, as, you know, uh, and, and I talk about this in my uh, uh, men's group, uh, you know, how, you um, being being loving can be seen as being weak or you know uh, having showing emotion in general uh is perceived you know can be perceived as weakness so men have to put on a you know their societal roles is more of a less nurturing more more antagonistic really and uh you know so uh god knows this about us and he directs us to to love our wives like jesus loved the, the church and that's yeah. um sacrificially you know and that's that's also to point out men's propensity for pride and selfishness so you know where to and that's that's my mission now as a as uh tammy lynn's husband is um a mission i take seriously is to is the lover, you know, and the and a lover like Christ would, and you know, really, you know, it's it's come into um, you know my mind uh, deep conviction to take that 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 uh, that mission seriously, um, because in our lives, you know, your family is your biggest thing, and and for a man, that's that begins with his wife, and um, and we're going to have, we're, this is a relationship we'll have, you know, uh, to the end of our lives or until Christ returns, whatever comes first. And that's the one we're supposed to foster, you know, after, after our relationship with God, we are supposed to foster the relationship with our life partner, our spouse. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and, and it shouldn't be, you know, in the world, you know, we look for uh, significance through our work or, um, through what we accomplish or anything, but uh, God's economy, he, he puts that first and foremost, um, love your, love your wives as Jesus loved the church. Um, I think that's a great point. I think that's a really great point because even as wives, you know, sometimes maybe it, it's hard if you have a difficult husband or if you have a husband who, you know, uh, you know, I think of Abraham Lincoln, he was so, he would have these horrible bouts of depression mm -hmm. um, and it was hard for him. And not that their life was easy because their life was not easy. They were going, they, he was president during the civil war. He was, uh, they had two children that, that died, you know, they, they just, you know, and his wife of course fell apart during those, those times and seasons, but there were times and seasons when she had to be strong for him because he would be in these bouts of depression. So sometimes it is a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. There is a sacrifice. 
But as Arthur um, started this, the next section, it says there's three elements of love, just like there's three elements of God. Mm. We talked about this in the three elements of a triangle, three elements of a, of a, of a stool. And he has always been, he has always been um, steadfast in these three as far as love is concerned. He always says it's choice, sacrifice, and trust. And I think that that's probably what you're, where you're taught what you're talking about, Mark, in, in regards to you know, oh, absolutely, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, that's the one thing I don't do is I don't look at Arthur's uh, outline before we start, um, just just so I won't you know know what's happening in there, and we'll see what comes up, you know. And sacrifice was you know obviously what I mentioned in the um, uh, in in the man's relationship to his wife is to be, you know, to sacrifice for her, to, um, to give and not receive necessarily. But as he points out, they're reciprocal. You know, we, we both have to choose, uh, you know, to love one another um, and to sacrifice for one another and, to, and most importantly, trust uh, one another. Um, so yeah, he really, the three elements of a love relationship that Arthur draws out there, uh, on the outline is, um, you know, uh, that's really the, the heart of it, you know? Yeah, um, I, think so. I think so. And, you know, he often points out that, that God, the father and God, Christ, the son, they did all three of these things. And of course he always puts on the first as, as choice. And I think that's true that, that people have to make a choice to love someone mm -hmm. Sometimes, um there you you see a person you know you, you see these, these young people and they're trying to choose somebody you know to, to date or choose somebody you know to love or choose somebody to be their spouse or whatever and you see them walking around you see that some people you know gravitate towards somebody and they'll say you know would you like to go out for dinner and the person will say no because right. that's not who they're choosing that's their right choice choice you know oftentimes um in prayer people are like well god you know always answers prayer yes he does he answers in three ways that's right he answers wait he answers yes and sometimes he answers no no yeah. and we have to accept those three answers those three choices based on his seeing what's best for us mm -hmm. Um, as far as the, the relationship with Christ, we, he chose us, yep. he chose to come, he chose to die, mm. one forces, even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us, um, the Old Testament, we've been reading through the Old Testament, mm. and you see the, the, you know, the, the chosen people, mm -hmm. Israel, that they were the apple of his eye, and he chose them, even though that they were not always obedient and we're not always following him carefully again that's a, another just light of a situation of, a, of just the love relationship it goes up and it goes down and it goes up and it goes down right and i, I think the nation of israel actually brings out a, a you know that, that really does bring out that choice god did choose them as as his people um but uh they had to choose him back and uh you know they um you know and for many of them uh they you know the they they fell in the wilderness uh they chose not you know not to trust him because that was the big thing um because they were in the wilderness they were calling him into the promised land and they didn't trust the lord and so in effect they didn't choose to follow him and they didn't choose to you know tr trust him and love him and to do what he, 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 they doubted and then they feared and then they were, they fell in the desert. Right. Um, you know, they, so uh, choice is, uh, you know, a big part of this, you know, when we talk about coming to faith, we make a decision for Christ. We have to choose, freely choose. He doesn't force us to love him, you know. Um, right, right. we have right. to decide, you know, we have to choose to, to choose to follow Christ. Right. And, uh, if we don't, you know, that's just like, you know, and we can have all the love we want for a person, you know, the unrequited love is a thing, uh, you know, where we can deeply fall in love with someone. 
Um, but usually those things are not based on fact. You know, they're based on lust. It's desire. You see somebody and you go, oh, that's it. And, you know, you proclaim your desire for them as love. And, and but without uh, the mutual, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's unfortunate. And it's, uh, you know, rejection is a thing. Um, but, uh, you know, when two people choose one another, that's when you have love. Um, that's right that's right it and really then, shouldn't be one-sided uh, although exactly. we can we can love people that are unlovable but uh how much better is our love when when it's mutual exactly mm. and and those, those are really great points because a lot of times people think they're in love but as you pointed out it's not really love it's it's that i gate that has has mm. Think that, that that's love when it's really really not love. It's and you you like, but I'm choosing this person, but this person may not be choosing you. But then you know, there's there's just like you said, there has to be reciprocal. It has to be a big a back and forth, a give and take kind of thing. Right, because it's not you know it's idol it's idol worship. Um, you know, you're, mm-hmm. you're 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 there's no relationship there. Um, it's you're throwing all your love and devotion at someone who's not returning it and that's just obsession that's not healthy and um you should you know accept the truth and um you know let there no be no as the bible says and uh move along you know right right. but we have a great example in in jesus because it says in god making this salvation for us so attainable because Mm -hmm. he loved us you know because god loved us first Mm. And all, we know all these Bible verses. And then uh, Romans uh, 10, 13, although I want to go back a little bit, it says um, mm-hmm. 10, 10, 10, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confesses, confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew, Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is, is overall, is rich to all who call upon him. And then 13 says, or whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So, it, you know, there's there's that reciprocal piece. He chooses us. He quickens our spirit. He gives us that unction to, to say and recognize that we're sinners and that we need a savior. And then he says, it's, e- it's easy. Mm. Just believe and call on my name and you will be saved. Right. And we're like, wow, that's really wonderful. Right. That's the great thing about the gospel is we never have to doubt the love of the Lord. Uh, right. You know, if we go, well, I don't know if he loves me. Christ coming into the earth, living a holy life and dying on the cross is God's proof of his love for us. He so, uh, you know, John 3, 3, 16, he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. His love has been demonstrated. Uh, we don't have to doubt his love. He's chosen us, but we have to choose him. You know, he, right. he, he, he's, his love is vast enough and, and true enough that it'll cover anyone and, you know, anyone who comes to him, uh, but they, but they must do so through Jesus Christ. Yes. Um, you know, his, his love for the world is, is unlimited, but the, the people who will choose uh, to receive his love through Christ is, is really a matter of, you know, it's it's a matter of several things, um, but you know, uh, yes, God's grace comes in, but there is a, a matter of uh, whether or not He foreknew who would come to Him because of His great knowledge, um, that He could see it before time began that this one would choose me and would not, or if it's um, but but it always goes down to there's still a personal choice involved here. Um, yes. You know, is it God who saves us or is it us? And the answer is, well, God, um, but there's certainly, you know, he doesn't drag anybody into the kingdom unwillingly. Sure. Uh, you know, I've heard it described that, you know, there won't be, in, there won't be anyone in heaven who doesn't want to be there. Um, and then there, w- and there won't be anyone in hell who, who really does. Um, you know, they, you make a choice. You may not understand the circ- you know, the, the consequences of your choice when you choose to reject God. Mm-hmm. Um you know, you might not know the full extent of the punishment of the, you know, when you break a law, you might do so knowing it's against the law, but you might not know the, what the penalties are. 
um, my broken my broken history. I was uh, uh, I knew a charge of disorderly conduct in my past, and and you know I was guilty. I knew I was guilty. You know I acted a fool and was disorderly, um, and uh, so I was like, I'm just going to plead guilty. And um, the judge um, said to me, said, do you realize that the, the maximum, you know, fine for this is like a thousand dollars in a year in jail. And I said, I did not know that. <laughs> and uh, I, know that. <laughs> I did not know that. And he said, so do you want a continuance? And I'm like, yeah, I'll have a continuance. And so in the, in the time I, I sought mercy and grace from the district attorney who made a, a, a deal uh, for what I consider to be much more lenient than the maximum penalty that I could have faced if I had gone on trial. Um, so you, you know, just, just like, um, you know, that small example is when we choose not to accept the love of God, we go, yeah, yeah, I know I'll, I'll do my best on my own. We don't know the circumstances, maybe in our ignorance or pride. Um, we don't, we don't know what the consequences will be for our re not receiving his love. Um, but we will be accountable and we will pay, um, whatever God chooses to, uh, to do and usually that separation from god in, uh, in a very bad place where jesus just jesus described it as uh you know uh, outer outer darkness and uh where there would be weeping and gnashing of teeth so it doesn't sound good and that's another thing you know the the blood you know jesus is seen as you know god is seen as jesus is seen as super loving um but but that's that's true but it's, it's not a full picture of the Lord that's drawn from scripture. You know, these are, the, you know, just general statements or con quote unquote common knowledge that people put out there that, you know, oh yeah, God would never, well, did, have you read his word um, you know, to, to get a full picture of who God is? And if you yes. do, you'll realize that, you know, he's holy and we're, we're to come to him. Um, he, he loves us, but we're, we're to come to him in a, sp a specific way through his son. So sorry for that Absolutely. rabbit trail there, but the no, salvation a, comes up. It's a good rabbit trail because salvation is, is the crux of God's love. It's, 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 the, it's the, the glue that's holding everything together is his love. Mm. And, but that love has those three elements, the choice and the sacrifice and, of course, trust. We'll get to that in a minute. But the sacrifice, which we've been talking about just now, is, is, is great because Jesus sacrificed himself. Mm. He was the lamb that was deemed before foundations of the earth to be the, the, the spotless lamb that, that would be sacrificed for us. Uh, we see that, you know, in, in the Old Testament, we see the, the exodus from Egypt and they had the Passover. And that was that was like a symbol that was like, you know, that was a foretailing of what was going to happen with Jesus, where they had to sacrifice the little lamb and they had to take the blood of the lamb and put it on their, their doorpost so that the death angel would pass over their home and not kill the firstborn of that home. And, <clears throat> you know, that they had to make a choice to follow the, what Moses was telling them to do. Mm hmm angel to show up at your doorstep and knock on your door and take your firstborn you need to do these things you need to get the lamb you need to kill it you need to put the blood on on the, the door lintel. you need to cook it you need to eat it you need to be ready to go but they had to make a choice to do that mm. and they had to sacrifice a little lamb you know a life we've often put out <clears throat> when we talk about way back in some of our lessons about adam and eve when they made a choice to to not obey god and take of that tree um, and their eyes were open in order for them to be covered. God, he mm. says, God made skin, took skins of an animal and covered them. Well, he didn't just go to an animal and say, hey, can I have your skin? Mm -hmm. he had to kill the, animal. the animal had to die and that blood mm. had to be shed so that the skins could be taken off and turned into clothing to clothe, to cover Adam and Eve. And that's what the blood of, of Christ does for us. It covers us. It covers our sins. It, it covers us so that we can be, as you point out, God is holy, so that we can be holy even as God is holy. Mm -hmm. Our sins are covered, that we're, we're made holy that way. In Colossians 5, 7, 1 Colossians 5, 7, it talks about the Passover. 
And it says, um, <clears throat> uh, therefore purge out the old leaven that you may have a new lump since you are truly unleavened for indeed Christ, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. And of course, part of that Passover feast was the fact that, that they weren't supposed to have the leaven in the bread to make it rise because they were going to be leaving very quickly right after this, this incident was going to happen. Mm. That's, that's the, the natural piece to it. As, as we've often said, first in the natural, next in the spiritual. Mm -hmm. and so the spiritual piece, of course, is that we need to get the sin, the leaven, out of our lives uh, Jesus often said things like, beware the leaven of the Pharisees. And that, you know, the disciples were like, what are you talking about? You know, and he said it because we didn't bring any bread or something like that. You know, no, 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 no. Listen to what I'm trying to say to you. Mm. The leaven in them is the sin, is the, the rejection of God. Because all sin, when you, you know, even the Ten Commandments, when you look at them, if you disobey them, you're, you're rejecting God. Mm. You're rejecting God, you're rejecting his word, you're rejecting his laws, you're rejecting his what's best for him. So all sin, no matter what it is, whether it's being disorderly and going mm -hmm. <clears throat> or for me, I, when you're talking about that made me laugh. Um, just a little sidebar here. Mm -hmm. uh, we were we were putting something in the in the garage that required oh when we got the new dishwasher and Arthur was backing up the, the Jeep and he backed it up into the handle of the snowblower and broke the uh. rear, rear light in a perfect circle, mm -hmm. but we had the piece. And so we were going to always go put the piece back, put the piece back, put the piece back. Well, we never did. One evening, not too long ago, I'm driving home and I get pulled over by the police. You know, your back light is broken. I was like, ah. So I got what was called a fix it ticket so that I had to get it fixed and then I could take it back. Mm -hmm. Well, things happen as things do in our lives, and I missed to get it looked at soon enough. So I had to go to the courthouse and say, what do I do? I'm, I'm past the date for this getting taken care of. And she came out and I showed her that it was fixed. She took my paper. She took all the stuff. She put it in. She said, well, you know, I'll, I'll put it before the judge and we'll see what he has to say. So yesterday, Arthur came home with the mail and he said, oh, here's something from the court. And I said, oh, okay, let me see what it is. And I opened it up, it's this very nice document. It says, all charges have been dismissed against you. And I was like, well, you know, that kind of made me go, well, that makes me feel better. Yeah. See, that's the same thing with, and I know that's kind of a strange way around it, but that's the same thing that we feel when we, when we do choose God and we do accept his sacrifice. And we do say, yes, cover me in the blood of Christ. Mm -hmm. That feeling and, and he says your sins are forgiven how many right. times do you just say that to people your sins are forgiven right because they because you were past the date and you could have right rightfully incurred a fine or a punishment of some kind um but they gave you mercy um, exactly you know, exactly and, uh, and you know, sometimes we have to come to, uh, and humble ourselves because mm -hmm. this is we have to be you don't just arrogantly walk in and say okay jesus i'll take you <laughs> right you know it's like hmm let's think about that choice hmm. yeah you're really considering what you're doing but you come humbly and you say i am a sinner i need a savior um i i accept you as my choice my choice that you chose me and now I, you i'm choosing you and then i accept your sacrifice mm. <laughs> i also like the hebrews 12 2 that says for the joy that was set before him he endured the cross yeah you know We've talked about this in the past, too, about the difference between joy and happiness. Mm. Joy comes from the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. You know, I will dwell in the joy that God, Christ has given me. You know, these are, this is what we attribute to the word joy. Very rarely do we attribute the, to the word joy that he endured something horrible like the cross for the joy that was set before him. You know, oftentimes we think of those things. Uh, Tammy, I'm sure you would agree with me that we endured the birthing of a child for the joy that was going to come next. And when we see that child living and breathing in, you know, in our world, uh, it's not going to be fun. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be difficult. But we endure that because of the joy that's set before us. <clears throat> I think that that's, that's the best I can do in my human frailty to ex understand how Christ must have felt. Mm. The joy set before him was that we would be saved. Mm -hmm. 
Nothing. Yeah, and I, well, and there's, I mean, not for nothing, uh, you know, it was the joy of uh, our salvation. Um, but uh, whenever we serve the Lord, there's always the joy of having done as the Father's will. And that was, you know, the, the, the most important thing, you know, uh, for, for Christ was to do the Father's will. Uh, yeah. You know, in the Garden of Gethsemane, you know, let this pass cup from, you know, let, let this cup pass from me, but not my will, but your will be done. And so that's the joy. And, and the only, I mean, this is not even anywhere close to, to Christ's sacrifice, but, but I have a small idea what that's like um, as, as we've served the church in various capacities. We've been in the mission field of various capacities. And, you know, those sometimes in a mission field, things aren't always fun. Um, no, not. And uh, it can be grueling hard work at times if you're doing a construction project to build a church or do whatever. Um, and uh, there can be, you know, some real, some real pains uh, involved with that. Um, but we, we did it uh, for the joy set before us in terms of we knew that we were serving the Lord in, in those capacities. And instead of walking away from it, you know, complaining uh, about it, we were, we were, we were joyful uh, that we had served the Lord and that we were faithful to follow him and that we had surrendered a portion of our, a portion, small portion of our lives uh, to his service, you know, for be, you know, a two week, uh, two week uh, mission trip or, you know, whatever. Um, that's what I, the one thing I've said to Tammy Lynn is, um, you know, when you, when you serve the Lord, when you do the right thing, you never really regret it. You know, there's no regret in doing the right thing. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what we try to do is, is, you know, you know, share the love of Christ and, and to do the father's will and, uh, to not look back, but to look forward to the next way we can do that. Exactly. And that, that segues right into the Romans 12, one, scripture that Arthur put here that uh, I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God which is your reasonable service you know <clears throat> we also bring in that that sacrifice of, of, of relinquishing ourselves as we come to the Lord and we choose the Lord and choose his salvation mm. and we also relinquish ourselves as living sacrifices daily giving ourselves to this, putting yourselves aside and saying, I will do the will of God. Okay, I want to do this, but you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to be faithful to the will of God. Should the Holy Spirit tell you to go this way, you should be obedient. I will be you know, obedient. In, in the Old Testament, it was that obedience is better than sacrifice. Yeah. Samuel said that to Saul when Saul did not obey God and jumped in to, to do the sacrifice before a, a, a war or something. Mm -hmm. and Samuel came up and said, don't you know that obedience is better than sacrifice? To God, you need to be obedient. And God will do the sacrifice. The sacrifice is necessary, but your obedience is, is more important. Mm -hmm. your, choice, your choice to choose to do the will of God. <clears throat> yeah, and Saul, Saul thought he could, you know, uh, just sort of pass over the fact that he was disobedient to God's commands with a, a sacrifice mm -hmm. and really just didn't even look to be if you read the text, it, it, he really didn't look to be, you know, uh, you know, yeah. recon reconciled to God as much as he wanted to look good in front of the people. Um, exactly, exactly. And oftentimes <clears throat> the term love is more for show. Mm -hmm. the person is kind of showing off kind of thing. And when you, now that you say that, that makes me think of that. They're not really, they're not really choosing to love this other person. They're not really choosing to sacrifice over this person. But they're going to make a show of, oh, I sacrificed. I, you know, I did this. I didn't go here. I, I gave that up so that she could do this, or I gave that up so that he could do this. Oh yeah. That's not really the, what we're talking about. We're not talking about that puffed up kind of. Um, right. I get to sacrificially make myself look better. <laughs> uh, but, but then, I like the Jeremiah verse that he also puts in here, the Jeremiah thirty-three, where it says sacrifice of praise we bring a sacrifice of praise into the house of the lord mm -hmm. and, you know we have we have songs that we sing in our church services that talk about you know i'll bring a sacrifice of, of praise and that's true that's where we have to make a choice 
to sacrifice what, you know, maybe sometimes we don't feel so good. And my poor dear Arthur upstairs, he doesn't feel so good right now. Mm. His face is a little swollen. He does, you know, he, he, but he's still, I'm sure he's up there praying for us. I'm sure he's up there talking, you know, thinking about what we're doing down here. I'm sure he's asking mm. God to, to give us wisdom so that we can give it to you and to, to whoever listening or watching. But, and he's sacrificing that part because he loves being here. He loves being with us. He <clears> loves being part of the, the, this, and that's his sacrifice today. Mm. <clears throat> choosing that and then i think the next piece is very important because if you're going to choose to follow christ and if you're going to recognize that the sacrifice piece to it then you've got to trust somebody yeah. in order to do that um, i don't know if you've ever played that game where you have to stand behind a group of people and you have to close your eyes and put your arms across your chest and you have to fall back mm -hmm. to them that they're not going to just let you fall on the floor kind of thing right um, you know, that's, that's kind of, that's, that's where the rubber meets the road, I think. I think we can all talk about, oh, yes, I choose this. You know, oh, yes, I sacrifice for that. Oh, interesting. You know, that illustration, I love the fact that you brought up earlier in the Passover, uh, you know, uh, the, the original Passover with Moses and everyone, you know, Moses is, is, is trying to convince the people, uh, the, uh, the nation of Israel that, you know, all these signs and wonders are happening. Um, but this is the big one. Um, you know, this, this Passover, you know, um, is going to lead, is going to lead to our salvation. It's going to lead to our exodus from Egypt. And he, you know, you got to put your money where your mouth is by doing the, you know, sacrifice the goat and put it up. This was the first time, you know, this was not, you know, something they had done before, right, um, right. you know, sacrifice the lamb and put the blood on the door. I'm not doing that. Um, you know, and they had to trust. Uh, now they granted, they did have the, the miracles and everything that have happened in the nation before to show them that uh, M Moses was speaking for God. Um, but they still had the trust to do it, you know, um, they could have trusted in the miracle so much that they, you know, refuse to do anything themselves. Well, surely God will do something and we'll, we don't have to do anything, but they were commanded and they, they, they trusted it and they obeyed. Um, and that, that the whole, you, that trust exercise where you fall back and people catch you that, that reminded me of, um, uh, my pole climbing experience um, basically it was the first time in, in, as a field technician in pole climbing school. You know, I didn't, I wasn't big on heights necessarily. Um, but when you, when you have to climb up a telephone pole, um, the, you discover whether or not you have a problem with heights. And a lot <laughs> of people, we started with 10 people and, and we ended up with only four graduating. So um, it was somewhat physically grueling and, and some people didn't like the heights. But when, sure. when, we, when we did that exercise, we had to, the first time we had to climb what is called a step pole where there's metal you know, bars coming out of the pole that you would climb up like a ladder. Okay. And when we, that was the first thing we had to do. And uh, we used our climbing belt. And they said, okay, you know, you climbed up so far, you know, 18 feet in the air or whatever. And they wanted you to safety on, to put that belt on. And then they wanted you to, to, to stand, on the, stand on the steps and to release your hands from the pole and just let the, let the, let the, let the, um, let the belt hold you. And oh. when you did that, they wanted you to put your arms out like 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 jesus on the cross and it was just like and after that you know basically i didn't have a problem with heights and i knew i could trust my belt and i've trusted my belt ever since and it hasn't let me down even though sometimes and believe me uh i've had moments where i've cut out from a pole and i swear the lord is it was there along with that belt to hold me up uh, where i didn't have any major problems but uh that's that's fundamental and and our relationship with love is is that trust you know yes yes i think that that is the fundamental piece you know and god of course the proverbs 3 5 which is everyone quotes and quotes and quotes trust in the lord with all your heart and lean on an understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path that you know, that's a that's a foundational verse that people need to stand on in order to when they do make their salvation confession. And now you have to trust him. You have to trust him. 
And I like how it goes on down. It says um, in verse nine, it says, honor the Lord with your possessions, with the first fruit of your increase, so that your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats to overflow with wine. And people often say, yes, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll choose the Lord. I'll accept his sacrifice. I'll recognize that I need the Lord for my, my salvation. I'll trust him for that. But what, wait a minute, my money? Right. Wait, things? For my time. I mean, uh, one thing I think about with you guys is you, you do the, the jail ministry still, and that's a Saturday night ministry. Not a lot of people would choose to go into a jail uh, on Saturday night, and that shows a sacrifice there. Yeah, Arthur and I did that too, and we, we enjoyed it. I hope someday that that will get opened up again after the COVID situation, it got closed down. Hmm. I was looking back, um, I probably was in the jail ministry for at least five years and I really enjoyed going in and it was not as, it was not so much a sacrifice for me because I really got the joy of the Lord to go in and work with the girls and, and, and do lessons and things like that. And I would even go in on holidays, you know, like mm -hmm. the 4th of July fell on one of the days, uh, Christmas Eve fell on one of the days, but I was, you know, and the girls were like, you, you would give up that, 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 that holiday to come here and talk to us. I said, yeah, because, it's, it's, it's no real sacrifice for me to come because I love coming. I enjoy doing this. Mm. Got to where they, they would trust me that I would, I said, if I'm going to be here. I'll be here and, I'm gonna be, and I'll be here unless, unless something else happens, I will be here. So that's how you build that trust. And the same thing with the love relationship, you build the trust. Mm. Um, at the beginning of the, the passage, <clears throat> You know, faith has to be built and hope is built. Well, love is also built and matures and, it, mm. and it's the maturing and the building of it comes from the ability to trust the other person. Do you trust me that I know what I'm doing is right? Do you trust me if I say that we need to, to go this path instead of that path? And, you know, sometimes we say, yes, yeah, as wives, Chamberlain, I'm sure that you, you could chime in on this one and say, you know, sometimes we're like, I can see a little farther down the road. It might not be a good reason for us to go that way, but I'm going to trust you and let and honor you and respect you and see if, you know, and I'll walk behind you. And if it does happen to be something bad, we'll work through it together. If it's a pitfall or something like that. <clears throat> but then that goes back to the husband being able to trust the wife who ha may have some, some vision and may have some sight and say, um, if we go this path, this or this or this could happen. What do you think we should pray about it? And so the, that brings, again, brings a husband and wife back together in a love relationship. I love you enough to stop and say, wait a minute, let me rethink my thoughts mm. and pray about it. And let's get God, that triangle apex, yep. going back to really weigh in on what's going on. And we need to listen to him. And then we trust him to give us that direction. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it don't go, Arthur went ahead to put on this piece, which I think is important, is that now then we are called ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us, you know, mm -hmm. to trust, trust somebody. We're, we're, we're trying to be an ambassador, even in this podcast, where mm. we're saying to the person who's watching or listening, you can trust us. We walked this, this road before, but if you don't trust us, at least trust God. Yes. We're ambassadors for God. We're just, we're just simply saying here, we've walked with God. We, we've, gone up and down and up and down we've we've trusted we've disobeyed we've obeyed we've not trusted we've come to a place where we recognize who he is and how faithful he is and so we are ambassadors for him saying yeah. here let me show you what's what's what and how he is a loving person amen yeah that's i mean that's the paramount you know of our ministry here is is basically um, you know, you can trust the Lord for your salvation, but even more, even more than that, you can trust him with your, you know, with your day-to-day -day lives and, and, and building that relationship of love for God and, and, uh, allowing his word to work in you. You can trust this. Um, you can trust the Bible is true. You can trust that God is, is, is loving and he, and he wants to work all things together for you, um, uh, if you love him and uh, if you're called according to the purpose, uh, if you're calling the call according to his purpose, he, he loves you. He wants you to come into your purpose um, yeah. and love him back and, and follow him. And yeah. you can, you know, that's what we're here to do is point. You can trust, you can trust the Lord. Well, I think it's interesting. I'm just looking at the bottom of the page on the outline it says, but there is a problem with love 
a purpose for love and a presence of love. Well, okay. let's look at the page and see what Garza Scott is as far as a problem for love. And he says, the problem with love is that it can be easily faked or sentimentalized. And I think we talked a little bit about that earlier in the podcast here, saying that sometimes, you know, love can be just, just a, a, a fuzzy feeling that we're just like, oh, yeah, I'm in love with you. I love you so much. You know, it's like, yeah, I'm stop doing that. But um, he points out in First John, let's, let me get there. Mm -hmm. There we go, first John. 420. Let's see what he's got for us in 420. He says, Well, this is a whole section. Beloved, God, if God so loved us, we should also love one another. That's for verse 11. Mm. Verse 2 says, And this is love that we not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be our propitiation for sin. So there's a whole bunch of things in this this chapter, this fourth chapter of first John that's all about love. He wants us to look at 20. It says, if someone says, I love God, but hates his brother, mm, mm. he is a liar and he does not have, love his brother for whom he has seen. How can he love God whom he has not seen? Right. That's the disingenuousness, you know, like, oh, yeah, I, I love you. You know, I, I love God, but I hate people. Um, yikes. Um, God called us to love, love him first and foremost, but then he called us to love our neighbors as ourselves. Um, right. so the, something's missing there. If you, you know, you might have to grow into it, but you know, if you're, if you hate your brother, um, you know, maybe there's reasons you hate him, um, but you need to grow and follow the love of the Lord to, to see, you know, what that's about, because that's what the Bible's telling you there. You know, I love God and hates his brother. You're a liar. Um, and it's not talking about your brother. It's talking about, you know, how can you love God if, if, if you have not, you know, you can't love, if you can't love the brother you can see and you can't, how can you possibly love the God who you can't see? Um, exactly. and, and it just, it's really a call by John and that, and that epistle really to, to, to press in and to follow the Lord and to, uh, you know, to fake, forsake the ways of the world as it really calls us, you know, the purpose in first John, um is to you know i write this to you so you will not sin and right. so we, and sin not necessarily breaking a legal code but you know to to be right with god to follow what he would have us do exactly. um, and so wait a minute hating my brother is that a commandment well it's sort of in there in terms of murdering and christ mm -hmm. pointed out that when we hate our brother we murder him so, yeah, well, you know, he was looking for an extension to the law to, to really apply to the, um, the general principles of God that, uh, you know, hate wasn't really okay with him. Yes. And, you know, the whole, like you said, that whole, the whole epistle of first John is just all about love, but it does get you to, to think, you know, more about the, the terra firma. Mm -hmm. They may have had the love of God. They may love God and love Jesus and say all that kind of stuff. But then you gotta when you the sacrifice comes back and when when your feet hit the ground are you willing to love a brother who's 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 hurt you or some a sister who's said something evil against you or a parent or a child or somebody any any person mm -hmm. that has caused you you know some kind of pain you know up in chapter three verse seven says little children let no one deceive you he who has practiced righteousness is righteous but he, just as he is righteous but then it goes on to say that down in, in uh, verse 15 it says whoever hates his brother is a murderer and you know that murderers do not have eternal life abiding with god mm -hmm. he goes on to say in 16 for we know we this we know love because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brethren mm -hmm. so there's the it goes back to that sacrifice. It goes back to trusting God that he knows what's best for us. And in order to love others, we really have to know that what's in our heart is not condemning us, as it says in verse 20, for if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and he knows all things. Mm. So I really wanted to, to, you know, to really grasp that because I, I love it. It says in verse seven of chapter four, it says, but beloved, let us love one another for love is of God. And everyone who is who loves is born of God and knows God. And he who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God is love. And then nine says, in this love, 
and this is the love of God was manifest towards us that he sent his only begotten son into the world that we might be saved through him. So, you know, there's, there's that big, the problem with love in, in our society and in our day and age is that we can, like he says, we can sentimentalize it. We can, we can make it fluffy. We can make it not really love, but really lust. Um, we have to be careful. We have to be careful not to make that just a mushy gushy love, but we need the love to be the true love of God, the true love of God. Arthur wrote a little sidebar in here. says, love can be confusing. Mm. If we try to oversimplify it or bring it down to the basis form to make love something we can do, um, then, you know, we're in trouble there. We get mm. we're in a little bit of trouble. Um, I don't see that he put it in here, but there's the, the, the famous thing when, when uh, Jesus meets with Peter and Peter feels after, you know, after the crucifixion and he denies Christ three times and he's, you know, is feeling so dejected. Again, those the, the threes are going to come back into this because Jesus meets him on the seashore and he says, do you love me? Mm -hmm. Feed my lambs. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. Do you love me? Feed my lambs. And the loves, the you know, love has three different words. There's there's philo, which is the brotherly love, and there's eros, which is that you know, romantic love, love. Yep. man and woman, you know, your husband and wife. And then there's the agape love, mm. that love that is of God, mm. that, that's something we can do. The philo and the uh, eros that we can do on the terra firma, but the agape has to come from God. Mm -hmm. That's where that love has to make a change. Uh, from this, we see that we are double-minded in our love and downright deceitful sometimes, and the truth is not in us. Mm. So when you have those kinds of, of love thoughts, you cannot be trusted. That's not sacrificial. Mm. That's not sacrificial, and it certainly is not trustworthy. Um, God talks about, and, and we saw in First John, it says, the purpose, there has to be a purpose for love, not just, just this fuzzy feeling stuff. Yep. It's, we would be like God. You know, that was the first, you know, lie that, that Satan said to Eve, you know, if you eat this, you'll be like God. Well, the truth about being like God is that we sacrifice ourselves, mm. that we give of ourselves. And it says, as we, I said, John, what, first John 4, 8 says, God is love. And it goes on to say that we, he shall, we, we know that he is revealed and we will be like him or we shall see him as he is. Mm. You know, that, that mirror dimly lit and then when we get to heaven we'll see him face to face and we'll really understand him and then that's and then it goes on to say we have known and believed that, that the love that god has for us god mm. is love and he who abides in love abides in god and he and him and we talked about this last week on our podcast the word abide mm. it doesn't just mean we go blew it and oh okay i got it i'm done Mm -hmm. No, it's staying there. It's a sticking with it. It's, it's a staying in the hard times. It's a staying in the good times. It's a staying when, when we don't feel great. It's the saying, saying, you know, well, Arthur is not feeling well. Oh, we'll just give up the podcast today. No, 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 no. Yeah. He would not have us do that. He would have right. us go ahead and move on and move forward and give. Because there could be one person listening to this podcast, one person watching today that finally gets touched that gets that ah oh, moment and says i choose god mm -hmm. i choose god. Yeah. i accept the sacrifice mm -hmm. and i trust him with my say with my salvation and that's where we have to really recognize that sometimes that purpose for love in a marriage relationship or in a friendship relationship or in the god relationship is a purpose to, so that other people will see it yeah. and want it and 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 they need to have it in their hearts. Mm -hmm. People and, and I'm sure you guys will start having this happen to you more and more. Is that young people will say, "Well, how is your marriage working? Why is your marriage working? How did when you first met her? How did you know it was real love?" You would be showing them all along your love relationship, your your choice, your sacrifice, your trust. <clears throat> and now they see it and they say, "I want that." But that's the same thing we want to do with our salvation. We want to show people that we chose God, that he chose us. We want to show people that he sacrificed for us, so we will sacrifice for him. We want to show people that we trust him, and he trusts us. Arthur loves to put this out. He trusts us enough to give us the, the ability to tell somebody else. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, who am I? Right. Who am I 
tell somebody about salvation. Who am I to? I'm not a preacher. I'm not Billy Graham. I'm not no. some fancy somebody who's who's out there and knows all this stuff. No, I'm just an everyday person. Mm -hmm. so he me enough to say yes, you can you can tell my story too. Yeah, tell somebody too. Absolutely. Wow, that blows me away. That's the you know the purpose is to share it. You know, it's a relationship. It's not supposed to be something you hold on to yourself. And, um, you know, the, the verses tell us, you know, when we, when we love, we'll be like God. So the enemy lied. He said, well, when you know what good and evil is like, you'll be like God. But uh, if, if, we, if, if he was telling the truth, he, he would have said you would love one another. Yes, and, yes. Serve the, and serve him and love God. You know, it would have all right there in the garden. But uh, right, right. Right. love still us to love each other because he wants us to be a family yeah i think that that's the next point that Arthur. yeah doctor uh, from the ally it says dr michael heiser is fond of saying god wants a family and a good father wants his kids to be like him particularly in their noblest attributes um i could attest to that you know you you love your kids and you want what's best for them um and you you want them to learn from your mistakes and you want them to go the way they should go um and we but we lovingly let them choose <laughs> um you know how they'll live their lives you know because, because we're of them seeing the, the the trust relationship we have with god right and the trust relationship that they have with you as a, as a parent to, to recognize that that they they there is something there there's something more there than just this fluffy stuff. And that goes along with his last point of the presence of love brings us back to the word abide. Mm -hmm. And it does. <clears throat> we may let our children make choices and, and go off on their own and, and make those things. And we read for our family sometimes when there are splits and there's problems like that, but we trust God and we continue to abide in him mm -hmm. and believe that, that he's going to make things right because we, we are, called according to his purpose and we do love god and we abide in him and we stay in that abiding state um it oftentimes makes you think of the vine the branch abides in the vine and without being abiding in the vine you know when you cut it off there's, there's, there's no, no life, life. Yeah. there's no life you know we were, we've got some peach trees out in the, in the yard and there's some little peaches on there and should i go out and start chopping off the, the limbs and bring a, a lemon that's got a peach on it and expect that peach to continue to grow into a, a good peach, I'm a fool yeah. because the branch is no longer attached to the trunk. It's mm -hmm. no longer abiding into the trunk. It's cut off. And how could possibly that little peach grow up to be a big peach mm. if you're not attached to the tree? <clears throat> and that's where we have to stand. We have to remain attached to Jesus, attached to God, attached to the life, attached to the Holy Spirit, and really, truly abiding in it. He says the dynamic of abiding speaks of the presence in the present tense, here and now. Mm -hmm. Not just <clears throat> to abide. Okay, I did it, now I can walk away. But it's, mm -hmm. it's, I'm abiding and I'm continuing to abide and I'm going to continue to abide in the future. Because you know, it says now, now in the presence, abide, right. faith, hope, and love. But it also means that it's 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 con it's continuous. It's a continuous thing. Just like mm -hmm. I said, oh. you know, we can't give out of an empty bank account. He often talks about First John. Back to First John. This is such a great chapter. If you really want to understand love, the Epistle of First John is so rich. Yeah. You know, you should do a Bible study on that, dear listener, dear mm -hmm. watcher, if you really want to understand love. But he says, but whoever keeps my word truly loves the love of god is perfected in him by this we know that we are in him he who says he abides in him ought to himself also walk just as he walked just as jesus walked <clears throat> so there it goes back to that trust factor do you trust god enough do you trust his word enough that it's true and that you're going to really 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 read this mm. and recognize the truth that's in it that you can trust it. And even when it says, if you hate your brother, you need to stop doing that. You need to love your brother and, and abide in God. And that, that whole thing about forgiveness, that's a, that's a whole nother yeah. series. Oh, yeah. It's, it's there, but we have to trust God enough that we can do that. 
that we can choose to love, that we can sacrifice for that love, mm. and then that we can trust God with that love, <clears throat> that no matter what happens, God is there and God is in it and God's going to keep us safe. And so I think that that's the, the best thing that we can say, you know, when Jesus was called Emmanuel, God with us, that's, that's that abiding peace. Yeah. And then Jesus said, I have to go so that the comforter can come and abide in you. Mm -hmm. And choice, sacrifice, and trust. We had to choose to believe Jesus, what he was saying when he says, I got to go away. Because they're going, wait, 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 you just got back from the dead. Don't leave yet. What are you talking about? And he says, I'm going to have to sacrifice being down here with you because I'd love to stay down here with you. But if I stay, then it's not going to, it's not going to grow. It's not going to spread. It's not, the salvation message is not going to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And the comforter, the Holy Spirit is not going to come. So he had to choose to say, I'm leaving. He had to sacrifice that once again, he's leaving again. Mm -hmm. But he's asking us to trust him, trust him enough to say, Yes, the Holy Spirit will come and abide in me. Yes, I know I can listen to his, the voice of the Holy Spirit, which is the voice of God. As he said, the Holy Spirit will not say anything that God doesn't say. Jesus didn't say anything that God didn't say. And we mm. can trust him. Mm. And so in a love situation, in a love relationship, we can trust God to help our love relationships be just as strong and just as, as, as courageous as Jesus was as he loved us. Mm -hmm. You know, this is where I see the conclusion of our little lesson today is that we choose God because mm -hmm. he chose us first. That's we right. Because he loved us first. We will sacrifice ourselves so that because he sacrificed himself for us. Amen. We trust him. We'll trust him because he, believe it or not, trusts us. Yeah. To tell other people to be ambassadors for Christ. Amen. To stand firm. And to love one another. Mm -hmm. I think that's important. Mark, you can have the last word and then yeah, pray. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, let's uh, let's just say, love, Lord, we love you, and uh, let's pray us pray us out here. Lord God, Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for the love uh, that you poured out on the world uh, through the gift of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, uh, Lord. Um, if we we never have to doubt your love for us. Um, because Jesus came and died for us. And when we, when we put our faith in him, we can feel the love of God uh, in, our, in our lives continuously because the Holy Spirit indwells us and, and moves us to abide in the love uh, that we first knew at our salvation and that we can enjoy every day um, because it just your love never ends. Your love doesn't stop. And uh, your love draws us closer to you and to lay aside our sins and to move uh, into the purpose that you have for us is to share your love, to let other people know of your love and to know that they can abide in it too. And Lord, we just pray for our worship services today that your love would abound uh, in the words of our pastors and, and to the music that's uh, performed and in the fellowship of the saints as they come together um, to to you know, to re reflect your love to one another. Um, Lord, we just thank you so much for the, the love you, you've given us and for all the things you've uh, lovingly done in our lives. Um, and uh, Lord, we just pray for your protection and guidance to, to lead us in your love in the days ahead until we see each other again next week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. All you, right, Mom. Susanna, I thank you for, you know, faithfully bringing Arthur's message to us. We'll be praying for his healing uh, and uh, praying to see him next week as he, you know, he faithfully gave us uh, a study to do when he was in pain um, for the for the joy that was set before him that we would deliver it. And you were faithful in that mission. And uh, we thank you. Uh, we thank my loving wife for being here as well. And uh, we're just going to sign off. And as, as, uh, as I remind everyone, we are releasing an older message on Wednesday. Uh, the, the title escapes me, uh, but uh, a new, new lesson 
will be out on Wednesday evening on YouTube uh, at the MT for Christ 24 uh, seven channel. And uh, as always, you can listen to all the messages all the time uh, through their audio podcast. That's on all the different outlets. And uh, Susanna, we just love you. And we thank you uh, for, for coming today and you have a great day and we say goodbye to everyone. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, everyone.